A case of a missing identity now on BBC One in the first of a two-part investigation for Amanda Redman as Beck. You want something, mate? What are you looking for? Jesus Christ. going for lunch, then I finally dragged your immaculate good taste down to my level. It's not. You haven't. There's someone I want you to meet first. Hello, Jude. Where is he? He's outside. Okay. Who am I about to meet? I haven't the slightest idea. He shouldn't be here. Else to put him. Another care in the community accident about to happen. That's everyone else here, but not him. I don't think he's mentally ill. So what's his story then? I was hoping you'd be able to find out. He's a complete amnesiac. Martin? He remembers his name. We gave it to him. He can't remember his own. Hello, Martin. This is my friend Beck. She's going to help you. You mean you've lived in London all your life and you've never been to the East? Oh, I used to take one of those dogs to a park around the corner, but it weren't like this. It's big, isn't it? You know, you could probably walk around here all day and not trade me anything. <laughs> oh. Are you all right? No, uh, it's just these stupid shoes. That's so... <sighs> Listen, you know, I've got a bit of an holiday coming up from Low K. <sighs> I've got work booked. Well, it could just be a weekend up north with some mates of mine. Yeah, hang about. Day trip to Beloy. Look, girls like me don't go on holidays, Ralph. Girls like me don't make plans. Here you are. Get on me back. Come on, jump on. <laughs> I landed on the lunch. Oh, you made us a sandwich. There's a six course picnic in there. Was. It's one course now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't tell me. Girls like you don't go on picnics. 
You don't really know that much about me, do you, Ralph? I want you, Charlie. I really do. Joan, wherever your husband is, you can rest assured of one thing. God is with him. And who else is with him, I wonder? I'll be locking up now, Joan. For the roof fund. Are you all right for money? Yes, Reverend. There's always a job for a strong black woman with a mop. There was blood all over Martin's clothing. But the wound was slight. No significant bruising, no hematoma. So it could be psychologically induced, then? Trauma doesn't have to be physical. Of course not. You nicked the breadsticks. We pay for them. I paid for them. Listen, mate, you're on the cash and I'm short of cash. Mick, I really can't afford another charity case. He was wearing a really nice Jaeger Lacoutre watch. Someone might be pleased to find him. You ought to slip this into the wash, you know. Otherwise, this moose will never come out. We've eaten too much, so um, sex at this point could be very... Messy. <laughs> I was banking on it. <gasps> Hang on. Antiques Roadshow. Early 19th century. Then you've got these classical columns. So, uh, with no ID. No. Columns, no trace um, of the police. No. Missing persons helpline? No one seems to be looking for him. But I'll let you know. Oh, come on, Beck. Why, well, he could be a murderer or a child molester or a wife beater. And that doesn't fascinate you? You know it does, you bastard. Kate? Oh, no, no, I'm afraid she's in a meeting at the moment. Oh, yeah. Can I get her to ring your bag? Yeah. She's got the number, she. Yeah. Okay, cheers. Yeah, we'll do. Bye. My mum's got your problem. She can't think and talk at the same time either. <sighs> <laughs> Love letters straight from the heart. I don't think so. Hello. Mm. White woman's burden. I oh, wish what you're doing, will you? Hey, don't you worry about him, soldier. Tell you what, we'll have a curry later and we'll stick it up in his coat pockets. He's taking his coat. Can I um, see your watch? 
Thank you. What do you think? 1940s? 50s? Sell it. I'm told it's worth money. Might be worth more than money. It's the only clue we've got on you, Martin. Right. Um, can you write a brief description of the watch here and then sign and date it at the bottom here? It's like a receipt. OK? He is British, isn't he? The speech therapist at the hospital put him somewhere in the home counties. About 40? I can put an ad in the national press. And it needs a photo, and it'll cost 500 a day. What are the alternatives? He gets his memory back. Any chance? Well, there's no physical damage to the brain. Could come back in a flash. Or... Not at all. Sissy gets embarrassed when you talk about things personal. <laughs> Samuel's taken more money out of the account. These cash points are in Highbury. That's about a mile away. We're so close to him now, Joan. He's getting very careless. Oh. He's always been careless. He didn't care much about me when he left seven months ago. Well, it's up to you if, um, if you're happy to drop the case. Happy? I don't think about happy anymore. We're so close. When Samuel first went off, I thought he'd come back knocking at the door soon enough. I'll give him a hug and I'll say, no, where have you been? We'll howl a bit and carry on. We well, can see how much money is left in the account. What would I say to him now? Ironic, isn't it? The closer he pushes you to poverty, the closer we get to finding him. I'm not in the workhouse yet. But I need to think about it. I need to think about whether I want him back. Oh, that's it. Is that done? Right. Is there my kiss? Mm -hmm. Go on. Hello, is that okay? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Mary's right. not in your office Buttons. at the moment. Okay. Now, where's your scarf? Sarah Crawford. There you go. Uh, Has he got a number for her? Right. OK. Then stick Great. that in your box. Bye. Not on our most wanted list, and uh, it was definitely his blood that was all over the shirt. So what about the fingerprints? Not back yet. I'm not sure if I want to know if he's got a criminal record, actually. Well, it would get him off your hands. Of course, he could be one of those who don't get caught and who's never been dabbed. What is it? It's you. Help like this usually comes with a lecture about confidentiality and your responsibilities as a public servant. I'm just trying to be helpful. I can't imagine what it must be like to have your whole life wiped out. In times of the past, I've always prayed for it. So, what's this about then?
goodness gracious Lord No tender voice of mine Can be I need thee, I need thee, every hour I need thee. Bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. Out of 15, yeah. It's not even waterproof. There was time before swatch to raise. What? So we flog this against Mr. Martin's bill, right? That could be a family heirloom. Well, he's not going to get a chance to find out unless we get paid, is he? Is he? Which is only linked with the past. What about his trousers? Hey, don't suppose they got the label of a nice, easily identifiable little Jewish tailor inside them, have they? Yeah. Hugo Boss, Paris, New York. Where's Ralph? Oh, raining on someone else's parade, I hope. She dumped him. Who? Charity. The stripper. Those two got it together. <sighs> Someone's so observant, you don't often miss a lot. Filth. Oh, well, you are definitely not coming in, then. Look, I'm looking for Charity. Ain't we all? She's gone. And between you and me, Cherub, I don't know where, and I don't much care. OK, Martin. Who am I today? Any change? Anybody want me? This Alpha in Perryvale, where has it been taken? The forensic boy's been over this. Well, I, uh... I bet you haven't even done a trace with the DVLC. Not yet, Governor. Oh, you, uh, you reckon the driver abandoned the vehicle after a severe nosebleed, do you? The file on this one. Cross your name off the front of it and have it on my desk by tomorrow morning, all right? But he knew the name of the Prime Minister. It's common. He's lost all the details that are personal to him. But his personality is still there, though. Yes, but the experiences that formed it aren't. He's intelligent, he communicates well, he's relearning very quickly. Most people would say he seems like a nice chap. Could he be faking it, then? Of course. Lying's a skill we all develop early. Well, most of us do, Beck. Need a lift? No, thank you. So how was Jules Jim for the tenth time? Still the same. Yeah, with one major difference. The other nine times I saw it were with you. You will let me know if there's any further police involvement in this case? You know, it's funny. I know that film so well. I know the two blokes fancy Jean Moreau, but every time I see it, I half expect the end to be different. I half expect the two guys to get off with each other.
Hi, this is Tony. I'm sorry I can't take care of you at the moment. Call me again from 6 p.m. till late, and I'll do my best to make it up to you. Hello, Tony. Look, you don't know me. My name's Ralph, and I'm uh, I'm looking for a girl sorry. called. Hello, Joe. You just caught me. I'd like to settle my bill. Fine. Um, I'll get Therese to draw it up in the morning. Do you want to pay in instalments? No. Samuel's had most of the joint account, but I had a little bit put by of my own. Some days I wish he was dead. I can't understand how he's not missing me as much as I miss him. Well, look, if it's a question of money... I it's not. I'm gonna have to take in a lodger to make ends meet. But I'll manage. Anyway, I need someone else in the house. I'm lonely. Sacrilegious. There's nobody, and I don't want a coffin. Funerals are for the dead. Do the dead care? I thought funerals was for the ones left behind to pay their respects. Look, I'm putting up real dead people in the ground every week without playing this silly blasphemous game. A memorial, then. So we have a service every time somebody runs away from home. It's the 1990s, Joan. We couldn't build enough churches to take the strain. Something. Please. I need to say goodbye to Samuel. I'm sorry. Convenient light. Yeah, I know it's been a long time. I'll call back later if you want. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that, eh? Okay then. See you later. No, Dad. Wasn't important. How many times have you seen him? Three. Three. And you think that gives you an infallible insight into her character, do you? I know she's in trouble. No, all you know is that she's dumped you. And, you know, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Well, can't you ask Talia to check around? This is your personal business, Ralph. You can ask Talia if you want to as a favour, but it's not going to go through this office. You don't care, do you? Look, my first priority is to the cases I'm paying you to work on. The last couple of days, I've started to forget what you look like. You saw the note I left about Sarah Crawford. You found her back yet? No. I will. I'll do it now. 
Time is money. We've all got to live. Sarah, uh, yeah, it's Ralph at Locate. Look, I'm sorry I haven't been able to get back in touch, but you... When was this? God, I'm sorry. I really am. Yeah, I, I understand. If you need any time to come in, then, well, just let me know if you want to talk. Really, I'm sorry. I found Sarah Crawford's sister. Fetched up dead in her Newcastle morgue. Yeah, she's right here. It's Tally. <laughs> she's been assaulted as well. You couldn't have stopped it, Ralph. She was identified yesterday. Could have called the family. Look, don't let yourself get hurt over charity again. But you're going to give me a lecture as well. Why not? Everyone can have a turn. Only don't use words like adult and mature, though, because we've heard them already. to fall in love with Therese. Do you want to find Mick about this? Uh, no. Let's wait and see what Tally's got. Mick? Yeah? You've got a minute. Well, make it quick. He's in the right state in there. I don't know what to do with him. OK, right. Uh... We'll give him a couple of days, and then if he hasn't pulled himself together by then, he has to go. You're not serious. Yes. You think otherwise? Great timing. Yes, I think otherwise. <laughs> she ain't always right, you know? She is this time. Jacobs? I am. Jerry Laws. I rang about the room, you remember? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> there was just something about your voice on the phone. I thought you were a black man. <laughs> oh, oh, come in. Thank you. You're not from London? Uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm from Liverpool. Well, Ireland originally. Um, I start catering college next week. A man who can cook? Yeah, yes. Well, I always wanted to do it. Just uh, came to it a bit late in life. You can give me a reference and a deposit, can you? You want to take it? Oh, yes, yes, as soon as possible. Good. Great. Uh, Mrs Jacobs, um... Does it matter that I'm not a black man? Well, it's not a good thing or a bad thing. Tomorrow, all right? We have a blood match. 
So it definitely is Martin's car then? It's the one he was driving two weeks ago, registered to a Mr. Andrew Dwyer, address in Ely. Anyone been contacted there? No one home. Neighbours say the wife's up north with her parents. There's a wife? We're trying to get in touch with her now. Is she reporting missing? Yeah, at the local station. Although you know it takes 28 days before they pass it on to the Met. Sometime tomorrow you can give the man his life back. I hope it's the one he wants. Well, he didn't just pop out for a beer, did he? I'm going to have to tell Mick about this. He's his patient. I'm sorry about the movie the other night. Doesn't matter. Oh, uh, yeah. Didn't snore too loudly, did I? <laughs> Seems like you look after yourself. <laughs> I used to be a builder. I'm well used to hard work. If there's anything you need doing in the house, because you're not charging enough rent, you know. It's not really a question of the money. Very fit. Very strong. I know you don't have to. They're heavy. Oh, I carried Samuel up these stairs enough times. You think this is going to bother me? Welcome home, Andy. They tell me you've forgotten everything. It was an anniversary present. You fell in love with it, didn't you? And there you are with Sam and Phil. You saved their millions on their books. What books? Accounts. Don't you remember? You're an accountant. A very good one. Excellent with figures. Mm. Who are you? This is Claudia. I'm your wife? Molly. She's your daughter. God, I don't remember. Is she here? That was taken when she was nine. She hasn't been here for five years, Andy. I can take you to her. Would you like to see her? This is Molly. This is our daughter, Andy. Accident. Five years ago. Surely you remember that. No? 
she got hurt. She's never going to wake up again. I'll leave you to your thoughts. There's soup and fish upstairs. You can't eat in here, can you? Thanks, Elle. I'll be right up. Didn't think you'd have so much stuff. Thought you might have a family or something to go home to at weekends. No. I'm not trying to get rid of you. Uh, Mrs. Jacobs. Um, Joan. I do like the flat, but it's not enormous. And I can be, well, a big clumsy lump of a fella sometimes. And I don't want to overstep the mark. It's your home. So if I get in the way, please let me know. Mrs. Dwyer, the day he disappeared. I've already told the police. I was at my parents, and when I came back the next day, the car was gone and so did he. And you know nothing more about the circumstances of his disappearance? I didn't say that. Why were you at your parents? You and Andy have a row. <laughs> what was it about? The usual. Money. It's very expensive to keep Molly here. Andy was driving, but the accident wasn't his fault. We got handsome compensation. It, it went into a trust fund. There should be enough to pay for her care for the next 50 years, except there isn't. We have to move her next week. Milked, that's the term, isn't it? I confronted him with it. Of course, he denied it. Are you suggesting he stole his own daughter's compensation? There are only two signatories on the account, and I haven't lost my memory. I know I didn't take it. My daughter Lorenz here, and our husband Tommy. God, it's heavy. <laughs> Pardon me. This has got to be your sister. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you see much of them? They went back to Jamaica. Tommy couldn't get no work here, and Lorencia said she was having a health and identity crisis. <laughs> She phones, though. I mean, your daughter looks after her old man. Not that old. <laughs> I phone them every week. Tommy still can't get no work. Lorencia complain about the heat. <laughs> <laughs> you been here all your life? I don't need telling which cricket team to support. <laughs> I hate cricket. Oh, no, do I. Do you really? It's so boring. <laughs> I'd sooner join the Presbyterians than watch a game of cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Have some more. I hope we get on, Joan. I'm very adaptable. A good listener. <laughs> That's a rare quality in a man. Um, your husband, he isn't around anymore? Mr. Jacobs left seven months ago. I'm sorry about that. You don't have to be sorry about anything. I'll see you later.
This is your room, Andy. You didn't think you were sleeping with me, did you? No, this is the room you chose when you didn't want me anymore. Your favorite. Used to be mine, too. Look at all these lovely clothes, Andy. Your exquisitely expensive suits. Try one on, see if it fits. <laughs> I know you better than you know yourself. You know, you should worry about the future, Andy, not the past. Because I don't buy this bullshit. Sally will invite us to the trial. Don't be silly. It's a criminal investigation. If the money's gone, and if the guy's a fraudster... That's two ifs. You want to try for a third? No, I'll just leave you two boys to it. I guess Tally will be around for a statement. What a joy. That's out the middle, woman. When I'm with you, you talk about him. And when I'm with him, vice versa. Could his amnesia be self-induced? I mean, when he got caught with his fingers in the till. It's very possible. No, well, it's not my problem anymore. I think he needs protecting, not prosecuting. He's depressed enough, and now we've chucked him back into a hostile environment. You think he's innocent, then? If he isn't, he'll go to prison. We don't have the right to torture him. <clears throat> I, um... I need to wander over to Ralph's place after you've had that. Does that mean you want me to come with you, wait for you, or go? Tally wants me to stop seeing you. So why haven't you? Do you think the three of us are avoiding the inevitable here? Definitely. And what do you reckon that is? You brought it up. Oh, God! What are we going to do? <laughs> what if I ask you to stop seeing him? What if I told you that I can't sleep at night when I know you're with him? I'd laugh and laugh and laugh. What if I told you I can't bear to see you slipping away from me and that jealousy's eating my guts away like acid? I'm not laughing. Hello, Anita. It's Jerry. Look, um, I've still got a few things to tidy up here. So I don't think I'll be back until next week earliest. Yeah, sorry about that. Great. OK. I'll try and give you a ring later in the week. Yeah. Bye. Hi, Maggie. It's me. I hear every day. And if I see you with a can of special brew, I'll ask for my money back. Who's he? 
No, Ralph. I'm busy. You've got to go. I've got to work. Go on. No. I'm not the... being here like Lovely. this. It's bad enough with death. He's blind as well, dear. Have you got an interest in this young lady? Yeah, I do. I thought it was a boyfriend. Well, that comes as a bit of a shock to me. Does that come as a bit of a shock to you, Charity? Look, will you tell him? Oh. I hate ugly scenes. That would be a good idea, young man, if you disappeared into the night. This beautiful child is going to be my wife. Having a child again. I'll tell you what I can't deal with. The nights you stand me up to go to him. Jerry the lodger. She's with you, isn't she? I don't know what you're talking about. You have Andy Dwyer with you. Mr. Sensitive's here. Divorce. It's abandonment. She's vulnerable. She's a stripper. Let's try again. Maybe it'll all come flooding back. And you can see part two of this Beck story Friday night at 9.30 here on BBC One.